So how many of you have had an important phone call, a message you're expecting, and lo and behold, your cell phone battery or similar is dead? I'm sure in that moment you thought that there was an issue, there was an issue with, uh, with the battery and you were quite annoyed by that. But I, I, I think beyond that, you probably don't think very much about the batteries that power our everyday lives in devices to EVs and much more. And I'm sure many of us have you know, whole drawerfuls of devices uh, sitting at home of old smartphones, tablets, and, and, and similar that are just piling dust. Well, it's actually the same technology, and you just heard about batteries, that are in electric vehicles, in energy storage, and much more. And that technology is the lithium ion battery. Well, again, I think the majority of us take this probably for granted, but the reality is that there's a lot of complicated materials in those batteries. Everything from lithium to nickel to cobalt, you just heard cobalt, and much more. And have you ever wondered about what's going to happen to all those batteries at the end of their lives? Well, I'm here today to talk to you about how the circular economy can help us with a critical element of the transition to a zero carbon economy, and that's energy storage. And specifically, I, I want to show you through changing our mindset towards recycling technological devices, we can buy the time that we need to build sustainable supply chains to produce those very materials, lithium, nickel, cobalt, much more, to actually fuel the future and the technologies which underpin that. And in doing so, we can lessen our impact on the planet, its people, and we're still generating a profit. Now, before I go much further, I think it's important to acknowledge what is the circular economy and how does that differ from the linear economy? Well, simply put, the linear economy is one where we buy, we use, and we throw away. The circular economy is one where we buy, we use, and we return those materials via supply chains for reuse in new products and new devices and similar materials again. Now, we know the linear economy. This is what every one of us does probably in our everyday lives. It's very easy. And in the context of energy storage, the circular economy can be extremely powerful. But let's start also with the macro context. You've heard today about the exponential growth of renewables. And that's fantastic. That's a very important part of the transition away from a carbon economy. Now we know for intermittent renewable sources, be it wind storage associated with that and solar, you know, those sources aren't always there. The wind doesn't always blow, the sun doesn't always shine. And hence storage is a very critical component to solving that intermittency. So here comes in our favorite friend, the lithium ion battery. So 70% of all rechargeable batteries in the world are this type of technology, the same technology that we carry around in our phones, tablets, and our electric vehicles. Again, the lithium ion battery. And it is the same technology that hence is growing alongside renewable energy generation exponentially in the coming years. And this supply chain has scaled dramatically. And although it's not apparent on this graph, even in these upcoming years, it is exponential growth. Now, as that is occurring, as I referred to, there are a whole plethora of materials, lithium, nickel, cobalt, much more, that go into those batteries. And so we have explosive growth in both renewable energy generation and storage, and a supply chain that's trying to keep up as we are on this mission to decarbonize. And unfortunately, driven by the linear economy, renewable energy storage is rife with unsustainable practices. You heard about cobalt just very briefly in the last talk. Why, why cobalt? Well, actually 60% or at least 60% of the world's cobalt derives from the Congo. And a good portion of that supply has been proven to be associated with, unfortunately, child labor. It's been exposed by the Wall Street Journal and, and various other sources. So we can't have this dichotomy. We're on this track to decarbonize and implement sustainable technologies, but that cannot be at the cost of human lives uh, for our planet and much more. So we need to find sustainable ways to supply the materials we need that are the underpinning of the growth of energy storage. That's cobalt, but it's also lithium, nickel, graphite, much more. 
things that we probably don't realize are in our pockets and our devices and much more. So what's the answer? How do we solve this burgeoning issue? Well, I hope you can realize that by simply changing our mindset to one of a circular economy in the context of batteries, as simple as opening up, remember that drawer of old devices, smartphones and the like, and simply taking it to your local Home Depot, Best Buy or similar, and dropping it off in boxes like these in the slide here, you can play a role in supplying those critical materials back to the economy, back to make new energy storage devices, and giving us the same technology to power the renewable future. So thank you very much. We can all play a part. Thank you.